Hi and welcome to Greece Travel Guide. Today we're starting a brand new series where we look at some questions from the TripAdvisor Greece forums. I'll put a link in the description below. The forums are an excellent resource for advice and guidance when planning your trip to Greece. So let's get started. So today's question is titled Santorini or not? Let's have a look at the question and then see what advice we can give this person or anyone else contemplating visiting Santorini. So the question reads, age, male 65, female 63, date, late May 2024, budget, no real fixed budget, but we would typically stay at the upper end of moderate hotels or lower end of luxury hotels. I have nine to 10 days to spend in Greece and I am planning on four to five days in Athens, three days on Paros, and have been trying to find a way to spend three days on Santorini. I have eliminated Mykonos because it seems too trendy, touristy for us. I have bad knees and Santorini just seems to present too much difficulty for it to be enjoyable for us in both walking steps and parking a car in Fira. I am now considering doing a day trip from Paros to Santorini or not going to Santorini at all and finding another island to visit. Would it be a mistake for a first visit to Greece to not include Mykonos or Santorini? Is there a way to do Santorini without walking miles? Am I overblowing the parking and walking problems? Does it make sense for me to do a day trip to Santorini just to see it and find another island to visit for a few days? So as you can see, there's quite a few questions in there. Let's look at them one at a time and see what advice that we can give. So first things first, they're looking to travel late May 2024. And this is a good opportunity to talk about the tourist seasons in Greece. So the main tourist season in Greece runs from the end of April, which is generally Orthodox Easter, uh, right through to mid to late October, when a lot of islands, especially the smaller ones, will start winding down and the weather can be a lot more unpredictable. So this person looking to travel late May 2024 is quite early season, but it's actually a really good time to go to somewhere like Santorini, which is a very busy, popular island. And it's not going to be as busy in May as it would be in the height of peak season, which would be late June all the way through till early September. So in that sense, uh, their travel time is uh, really good. Uh, also means that prices are going to be a little bit lower and should be less crowded. Uh, budget, I'm not going to cover too much because it sounds like they're quite flexible. And now let's talk about their itinerary. So they're looking to spend a total of nine to 10 days in Greece, which uh, for someone traveling long haul, and we can see that this person uh, is from Florida, uh, it's not a huge amount of time, but obviously it's enough to uh, to see Greece. Um, they're planning on four to five days in Athens, which is quite a lot, three days on Paros, and potentially three days on Santorini. So the first thing I would say in regards to spending time in Athens is this should be done at the end of the trip rather than the beginning. Uh, it makes more sense to arrive in Athens and then head straight to the island if you're going to visit an island and then save sightseeing in Athens until the end of the trip. You'll be less jet lagged, more acclimatized, and it also means you'll be back on the mainland close to the airport for your return flight home. I also would say that four to five days in Athens is quite a lot. Um, they don't specify whether they're planning on seeing sites on the mainland outside of Athens, but generally you can see most of the tourist sites in Athens in a couple of days, um, which we did uh, last year quite successfully. And I've got a separate video on that. Three days on Paros is not a lot, um, bearing in mind that three days only gives you two full days on the island. So you'll have the day you arrive, part of that day, depending on what time you arrive. You'll then have two full days and then you'll have part of the day that you leave. Um, so two full days on any island is not a lot if it's your first time there, um, but it is manageable and that is generally the, the shortest uh, duration that we would recommend. When it comes to then spending three days on Santorini, I would actually say that that is a good amount of time. Um, Santorini is quite a small island and it, in addition to being quite expensive and very popular, which we'll get onto in a minute. Uh, there's not a huge amount to see on Santorini. Uh, most people go for obviously the cliffside cold era views and also the sunsets, which you can either see from the capital Fira or more popularly from the uh, northernmost village on the island, which is called Ia. Uh, and also there is the ruins at Akrotiri and there are some wineries on the island as well. Um, but generally three nights is 
enough to see Santorini. A lot of people say that's a good amount of time, so no issues with the duration there. They then go on to talk about having bad knees and whether it's an issue walking and parking a car. So let's take the car issue first. Um, I've never actually hired a car on Santorini. Uh, I don't think it's particularly necessary. There's a good bus network on the island. Uh, all the buses go from Fira, but you can get from Fira to Ia, to Akrotiri and to the beach resorts, Parissa and Kamari on the eastern coast uh, very regularly and quite easily. So I would say the only reason that you would want a car is if you want to really explore some of the uh, less touristy parts of the island uh, or if there are lots of you, maybe three or four people and you know you just want the flexibility of being able to go where you want when you want then a car is more valuable um, but generally I would say that buses uh, are pretty good on the island and obviously there are taxis available should you uh, you know need to go somewhere specific as a one-off uh, probably more cost effective than hiring a car for the entire trip. The other thing affecting the car hire is uh, your accommodation so if you are planning on staying on one of the sort of cliffside hotels the, the more luxury hotels you won't find any hotels like that that have parking nearby because there's just no room to park a car on the side of a cliff in which case it kind of negates some of the benefit of having a car because you're going to have to park your car away from the hotel and then walk from the car to your hotel every time you want to go out i would say if you're hiring a car then you know Bear in mind you want to stay in a hotel really with on-site parking. The other question in terms of accessibility with this person sounds like they have limited mobility. Staying in a hotel on the cliffside is also probably not a good idea. Uh, again there's no way of getting a vehicle close to these hotels. They are uh, foot only and they generally involve walking up and down a fair number of steps. So my other advice is if you're less mobile, um, you're going to have to sort of accept that you're not going to get right on the side of the cliff and look at hotels, you know, that are a little bit further back uh, and hopefully ones that have on-site parking. Let's have a look at the rest of the questions. I'm considering doing a day trip from Paros to Santorini. If you don't want to stay on Santorini, there are day trips available, um, I believe from Naxos and Paros. Uh, a couple of times a week there is a daily uh, excursion that you can take. Um, the issue I would say with that is it will give you obviously a taste of Santorini but it also means that you'll be arriving and departing during the day which will also coincide with a lot of the cruise ship passengers. The way that Santorini works and the reason that it's so busy uh, a lot of the time is because it gets visited by cruise ships, they arrive overnight early in the morning and then the passengers will disembark early in the morning. They will come to the island, they will walk around the capital, uh, you know, have bus trips here, there and everywhere. And then late afternoon, early evening, they'll all get back on the cruise ship and off they go. So the quietest times to be on Santorini are very early in the morning and late in the evening when all the cruise ship passengers have gone back on the boat. If you're going to do a day trip, uh, you're just going to have to accept the fact that uh, you're not going to see Santorini at its quietest. That may be okay for you. It will still give you the opportunity to see the colder reviews, uh, maybe visit to winery, visit Akrotiri. You know, you'll have a few hours on the island. So it could be a good compromise if you don't decide to stay on Santorini. Let's just look at the rest of the question. Is there a way to do Santorini without walking miles? Well, as we've just discussed, you don't have to walk any particular distance on Santorini. You can take a bus, you can take a taxi, or you can hire a car. Um, I can't really think of anything on the island that is a sort of must-see attraction that would involve a huge amount of walking. Um, obviously, if you want to see some of the smaller churches, um, you know, they generally tend to be fairly inaccessible, but you can get to Ia, you can get to Akrotiri on a bus, you can get to the beach resort on the eastern side of the island by bus. And once you're there, you'll find most of them are fairly level ground. Um, the only exception to that is Ia and Fira. If you want to sort of go start going down towards this sort of cliff edge, yeah, then yes, you will go up and down some steps. But if you want to stay in the kind of central shopping areas in Fira or, you know, the main areas in Ia, then there's really no reason that you'd have to go up or down any steps. I don't think uh, walking mobility problems are an issue on Santorini any more than they would be on any other Greek island. Just looking at the question as a whole, does it make sense for me to do a day trip? Well, 
that's obviously a judgment call. I think Santorini is a an island that's well worth seeing because it does offer unique views that you won't find anywhere else in Greece or anywhere else in the world. Um, can you do that on a day trip? Yes, you could. Um, so it's very much a judgment call. Three nights is a good amount of time to spend on Santorini. So if you've got that, those three nights available and you know you can find a hotel that's within your budget and meets your requirements for accessibility, then I would say it's worth doing. Just thinking about some alternatives, if you do decide not to go to Santorini, uh, there's plenty of other options nearby. Naxos being uh, an obvious one, it's right next to Paros, so very well connected by ferry, takes about 20-30 minutes, slightly larger than Paros. Um, often people will recommend to stay on one or the other because they are quite similar, but Naxos is the larger of the two and has a little bit more to see and do, so they do complement each other quite well. You could also extend your stay on Paros. Uh, there's also Antiparos, which is kind of a small little island off the coast of Paros. Um, a lot of people do combine Paros and Antiparos, stay a few nights on each, uh, or just extend your stay on Paros and visit Antiparos, uh, you know, as a day trip or series of day trips. Uh, there's a very regular ferry service takes about 10 minutes because the islands are exceptionally close. You could also look at Amorgos, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for anyone with mobility problems because it is quite popular with hikers and uh, it is quite a sort of mountainous island. Um, so if you're not looking to do a good amount of walking, it's maybe not the best choice. Another alternative worth considering is the island of Milos, which is easily accessible from Paros by ferry and uh, is also a volcanic island similar to Santorini, although it doesn't have the same iconic caldera views, uh, but it is a very pretty island, and a popular thing to do on Milos is to take a boat trip around the island, uh, which we did back in 2020, and you get to visit some really nice secluded beaches and coves, and you can also hire a car on the island. The bus network is probably not as good as Santorini, um, but if you hire a car, you can get to lots of nice beaches and uh, it's a great island to complement with Paros. It also has an airport, which means if you are flying back internationally via Athens airport, that you can take an internal flight back to the airport for the end of your trip. So I hope you found this video helpful. As always, you can find more information on Greece on our website, www.greecetravelguide.co.uk. And also check out our other YouTube videos. We have various island guides on popular islands such as Paros, Sifnos, Amorgos and more. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.